Hello physical science students, welcome to the third video in radioactivity. In this one we're going to look at what's called nuclear stability. So why do some atoms decay? And then we're going to again look at the types of decay. First of all, nuclear stability. Now, there's a new term we have to learn, which we don't use that often, but it's out there. It's called transmutations. And transmutations are when atoms undergo radioactive decay and the end product, you start off with one element and once they undergo radioactive decay, you usually end up with a different element. And so they transmutate. Now that decay, transmutation refers to not just when they undergo alpha, beta and gamma decay, but also when we change them or nature changes them by bombarding them and hitting them with things. And when we look at nuclear bombardment, we're also talking about transmutations because the starting at nucleus is not the same as the end nucleus. Now, so that's the terminology we have to be aware of. What do we mean by nuclear stability? Well, why do atoms decay is a question you might ask. Well, because the nucleus is unstable. Now, the nucleus is the protons and neutrons. And all those protons have positive charges. And if you've done electrostatics, you would know that like charges, or like electrical charges, don't like being close to each other. So if you have two positive charges, they don't like being close together. And there's a very strong force that flings them apart. Now, why doesn't that happen in a nucleus? In the simplest nucleus, not the hydrogen, which is the simplest, in the next simplest, in what's that? Helium, you have two protons close together. Why don't they just fly off? And in fact, in every nucleus, you have lots of protons all close together. Why don't they fly off? Well, the answer is neutrons. Neutrons apply what's called the strong nuclear force, one of the strongest forces we know. Um, it overcomes the electrostatic repulsion of the protons. And so you've got to have the right number of neutrons to keep all those protons together. And ideally, the ratio of protons to neutrons is one to one. And that would make the most stable nucleuses. But not all of them are. And if we look here at a few, something like uh, oxygen, oxygen 16, hope that's not too small for you, it has a ratio of one to one. But these ratios are getting bigger. And that means it goes from zinc 65, lead 207, uranium 238. You can see that as the protons increase, the number of neutrons have to increase even faster to keep those atoms together because these are all stable nucleuses. But the unstable ones will have slightly less of these but you need a lot more, so the ratio increases. The bigger the nucleus, the more neutrons you have to have to keep it stable. And if we graph that, so on this axis we've got the number of protons. So effectively this is moving through the periodic table, starting with hydrogen, working its way to the heavier elements. And this is the number of neutrons. And it starts off as a straight line. And as it goes, as the elements get heavier, it departs from the straight line, and that's because you need more and more neutrons to overcome um, the repulsion of the protons. And so they become less stable, because they just can't do the job. Now, before we do it, go any further, we have to learn some of the symbols that you're going to see in these videos, and coming videos, and how we use them. Now, these are the most common symbols that we're going to have. Now, in atomic physics, we're going to use the isotopic symbols, and so we're going to have two numbers, generally speaking. Uh, we have the number of protons, and then the mass number on the top. And this is an alpha particle, which is also given a Greek A, like a fish, but without the tail joining together. That's the alpha particle symbol, and this is the alpha particle symbol alpha particle being a helium nucleus with a mass of four and two protons. A proton, 
proton can be a little p with one 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 proton mass of one or because it's the same as a hydrogen can be given a H. A neutron is a little n, has no protons but a mass of one. An electron, little e, has no mass but has a minus one and we'll explain where this minus one comes from when we do beta decay. And this is the symbol for beta decay. It's a B but it's got a little tail so you need to draw that little tail when you do it. A positron which we'll talk about what we mentioned. This is the antimatter equivalent of an electron. And a gamma ray is a sort of funny little thing like a fish standing on its tail. And they're the symbols that you'll see from now on, quite used quite a lot. Uh, a couple of things. What's radioactive decay? It's the breakdown of large nuclei into smaller nuclei, releasing radiation. Now you have a decay product. Now that decay product is sometimes called a daughter nucleus or the daughter isotope. And this is the equation we would use and this shows the relationship. Because we use the term daughter nucleus or daughter product or daughter isotope, this would be the parent. And then you have the particles. And much like a chemical equation, we haven't had much experience with chemical equations, but these are similar. You read them from left to right. So here you have uranium-238 and in, in uh, nuclear equations we show the top and the bottom numbers because they all need to add up. And so this is uranium-238. It decays. If we can remember what that particle was, that tells us that that's an alpha particle. So uranium-238 decays by producing an alpha particle and a daughter nucleus and the daughter is thorium-234. Now you need to notice, and we'll do this some more in detail later on, that the top numbers add up. So 234 plus 4 gives you 238 and 90 plus 2 gives you 92. And that's why, why we have the top and bottom numbers. Notice also that the alpha particle is a product. It wasn't there before. It was actually hidden away inside the nucleus of the uranium-238. A lot of students want to put the decay product over this side, but a good way of thinking about it is this is the before and this is the after. And you have the particle, the decay particle, or the radiation, after the event gets a bit more complicated than that because we start bombarding things but uh, that's a good starting point. Right, Ooh, my mouse is flashing everywhere. What are the types of radiation? Alpha, beta, can you read that? It's written in white, it says positron and gamma and we're going to be studying alpha, beta and gamma in a bit more detail. Positron, we'll talk about briefly but that's about it. And that will be in the next video. We'll start going through those. So look forward to Alpha Decay video 2.4 in physical science. See ya.